good. Thank you, Ricardo. Okay, everybody. Um, I don't know who else is joining us today. I know I've got Ricardo on here. Um, if you are here with me today, um, this is the Content Creation Boot Camp. I am so excited about doing this. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. So um, we are going to get started. I've got a really fun schedule plan for you guys. I wish this could be more interactive and um, in the future I'm going to figure out ways that we can do this. Uh, but essentially I did post earlier, I posted a folder in the group, uh, a Google Drive folder. If you were able to grab that, um, it's in the group. Uh, I just posted it, what, about three hours ago. So that is going to be added to um, over time as I, you know, get more information and, and I'm able to, uh, you know, gather more materials and more resources for you. But I foresee this kind of being a two-part uh, boot camp. Like we'll probably have this one and then uh, this will be kind of the, the beginning intro. And then later on we'll do something that's more advanced because we really aren't going to have time to do everything. Um, I would like to cover, you know, uh, the more advanced video editors and, and analytics, and we're probably not going to be able to get to that today, unfortunately. But um, we're going to get to as much as we can. All right, let me get to this. All right, so what are you going to be learning today? Basically, it's going to be the four E's of content creation. Uh, we're going to talk about that first. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is a content creation schedule. Now, there's a couple of options for you here. Um, I've got a Google Sheet option that I'll show you that, um, that I use. And then um, also uh, one of our members, uh, Julie Landon, she also has created um, a content planner and she's got that out on Amazon, and I put the link in uh, in the group today, and I also put the link in the helpful links page too that's in that, that uh, drive folder. So um, either one uh, you can use, or both, but if you prefer a paper planner, hers is gonna be better. If you prefer something online, um, then, then my mine hopeful, hopefully will be some, um, some help to you. Uh, we're gonna talk about where to get inspiration, uh, how to do your research. Some of you may already do this, but um, for those of you who are just getting started in content creation or needing help with that, uh, this is the method that I use, and certainly um, you know you can adopt this or come up with your own. Uh, then we're going to talk about how to find viral sounds before they go viral. Uh, there's um, there's an app that I use, and I'm going to be sharing that with you guys. Uh, I think it's a great app. It's um, well worth the the price that you pay for it. Um, which isn't a lot, but um, I do highly recommend it and it's going to be very helpful to you, I think. Oops. Uh, then we're going to talk about the basic structure, that hook story offer. Uh, you know, that, that is why it's, you know, each one, of your, um, each one of your videos should always have those three elements in it. And then uh, copywriting. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Not going to go into great detail. That's probably going to be something that um, is going to be covered in and of itself at, at another training. Or, um, you know, there might be, uh, when we do this advanced version, I might talk a little bit more about copywriting. Then we're going to get into video editing skills. Uh, those We're going to talk about text overlays, jump cuts, uh, and other, other kinds of cuts, color grading, and clip sequencing, clip management. Uh, those things are super important uh, in your, when you're making TikTok videos. Uh, and, and I want to be clear that we're talking about TikTok today. We're not talking about other types of content. Like if you're um, interested in doing YouTube or Pinterest, that's not what this training is for. Uh, this is for TikTok specifically. Uh, these also, but you know, as you know, you can also re repurpose your TikTok content onto other platforms. So if you want to put it on Instagram, if you want to put it on YouTube, YouTube has, um, you know, they also have, um, what is it, stories now? And then Facebook, I see, has reels now, I, I guess. This is something new. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about equipment. All right. So the four E's of content creation. In every one of your your posts, uh, you should be trying to do these four things: educate, entertain, engage, 
and emote or, or to elicit emotion in the viewer. If you can do all four into one video, this, this is the, the, the secret sauce to going viral. Um, people who are able to do this, uh, you know, even if it's even if it's something that um, you aren't sure, that, <laughs> you know, I see I've seen a lot of things, and I've done them too, and you have too, where you've just kind of thrown something together, throw threw it out there in a matter of five minutes and or less, <laughs> and it's it's gone viral. Uh, as you know, in the other flip side of that, you've spent hours on something and you put it out there, and it gets you know like under a thousand views. Um, happens to me all the time, but if you can educate, right? You're telling you're you're telling someone how to do something, you know, like the top five ways you can, um, you know, uh, create content on TikTok, uh, you know, or do faceless videos on t on TikTok or YouTube. Uh, entertain, of course, that's going to be something that's going to have that you know sound or whatever that meme that's going around that's going to be funny. You're going to be able to um, to make people laugh. That that's really critical. Um, engage your audience, and then finally, you know, elicit emotion. Get them to feel something. It's so important. Anyway, uh, and then the other question that you should be asking yourself is, why is your target audience on TikTok? What are they doing there? What are they there to learn? Or are they there just to be entertained? Your trick here is to find out why they're on TikTok, and then make sure you make content that is going to be targeting them in that way. All right. So content creation schedule. Uh, so I created this. This is uh, it's a spreadsheet. It's actually in Google Sheets. It's on the Google Drive. Um, basically, you can create 15 or 21, depending on how you want to customize this. If you want to customize this and add a couple of couple more um, content pillars you can but the basic structure is that you have these four content pillars so this is this is an example that I'm using so my content pillars are uh, promotion to target audience your brand personal story uh, content pillar uh, for personal development and self-care uh, niche focus tips and how to's so an example of this might be, and then down here, you're gonna put your ideas in, right? So in the posts, you're gonna do three, um, three posts for each one of these content pillars. So you're gonna see that particular pillar, like promotion to, to a target audience, through the lens of three different um, idea posts. One, inspiration, two, educational, and three, entertainment. So my example here for promotion to target audience, my first inspiration post might be a motivational speech with a retirement guru, someone who's, um, you know, who's basically advising people how to, um, you know, how to boost their retirement income. Uh, and then have a link to the speech, um, you know, that you're gonna be using so that when you're ready to do the content, you can just grab that um, whatever that video is and drop it in. Uh, that's fairly easy to do. Uh, I think I've, um, I can show you guys how to do that. How to, you're just basically using a green screen video. Um, and then educational posts, maybe five tips for creating multiple streams of income in retirement. And then finally an entertainment post, it's gonna be some kind of a meme with lip sync. Uh, but there's other things that you could do, but you know, just, just kind of, you know, that's going to be part of your research, you know, finding out, you know, what kinds of things you can use. But that's an example of how I would do uh, that one content pillar, uh, promotion to target audience, and then seeing through the lens of these three different um, topic ideas. So inspiration, education, and entertainment. Uh, so what I would recommend, and let me see if I can pull that up. I'm going to go ahead and pull up that. Um, that folder. And bring it down here. Okay. 
So I've put these into um, all of these into that drive. So I'll show you what this looks like. If I can open this up. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Not the one I wanted. I wanted the other one. This one here. So this is a template, and you guys can use this if you want to. I've also got it, um, it's blank, so that you can put your own content ideas in each one of these. And this is going to be particular to your niche. And then you can type into these blocks here. And I've got it set up through uh, November 29th all the way through the first of the year. So you can get started with this. But this is super customizable. All you have to do is just add... Um, you know, add your information. If you want to add another pillar over here, you can. Uh, if you have basic Google Sheet skills, you can definitely do this. So that's in that folder. And then um, I've also put some helpful links in here too. And here is Julie's uh, social media planner. There's a link to it right here from Amazon. And this is a paper planner. So for those of you who prefer to use paper, uh, this is going to be great for you. So, you, you know, I encourage you to go buy it. Uh, support Julie because uh, she put this together, guys. And, you know, she's the, she's the Amazon KDP guru in our group. So she's the person you should go to if you want to learn more about Amazon KDP. So um, hopefully that will be helpful to you as well. All right. So going back to where we were. So that's how I do it. That's how I create my content schedule. And then um, do I follow it all the time? Well, honestly, I try to, but I don't always. But here's something else that I use. So where to get inspiration? So this is part of what I do for research. I look at um, accounts that I find to be inspirational or that, you know, accounts with, frank, frankly, those folks who are doing really, really well in affiliate marketing. If they're uh, making money promoting um, um, any one of, you know, the courses, um, especially Legendary Marketer or uh, Jonathan Montoya's course, if they are doing well and are um, succeeding, then you'll want to look and see what they're doing. Now, they may not be doing anything earth shattering, but they've they may have some original content that you can borrow and look at the ones that have the most views, right? So I'm going to show you uh, what I use then. And this is, those of you who have been uh, followers of, who are in, in Legendary or in the Blueprints, you know that Matt does the Thursday afternoon uh, webinars at uh, 3 o'clock. So Matt has done numerous trainings on this, and one of the things that he uses is this tool that I am going to show you here. So this is what I do. is why I keep everything in this spreadsheet. I've also posted that the spreadsheet in the group. I'm sorry, in the Google folder, Google Drive folder. But um, it's basically it is customizable. You can use this how you how you see fit. Let me see if I can pull this down so you can see it. I think I've already got it in here. There. You can see how I've done this. So I've got it set up where you can put the video link here, uh, topic, what, what is the topic of the video, and then the platform, what platform is it on. Uh, I've got a drop down list here. Uh, I've got the original post date, you know, when it was posted the first time. Who was the publisher? Uh, how many original views did it get? And what category? So I've got these categories in here. Uh, you know, if you want to add more, you can, but I've got five categories in here that you could, um, that you can choose from. And then was, and then your own creation. Did you post it? Yes, no. What's your link is? Uh, how many views it got and the date you posted it. Now, honestly, I have not kept this up to date and I have recreated some of these, so I'm not practicing what I preach very well, but, but this is a way for you to keep track then too of what you do 
and how it's, um, you know, and how well it did for you. So I'm going to go to TikTok right now. And I'll show you sort for TikTok. So this is a very cool little Chrome extension that fits right into your Chrome, your Chrome browser. And it's this one right here. I hope you guys can see it. Oh, you know what? My picture's covering it up. Let me move my picture. My face. I'm just going to move this down. Why can't I grab that? I think I know why. Hold on, guys. Nope, yep, looks like it's set up. Okay, there, now I can grab it. All right, it's up here in the upper right-hand corner where all the extensions are, right here. It's called Sort for TikTok. So I'm just gonna use the example of my own account, but I encourage you to, to do this. Download that Chrome extension and use this on other accounts so you can find the ones, you know, who, the ones that have the most views is what you're gonna be looking for. And then basically you just click start and this app is gonna start sorting and you'll be able to see the, the, you know, the videos that have the most views, what was the topic, um, what was the date that it was posted, like this one here. Story time, what would you do if you lost your primary source of income? So this is one that I did, I posted it on October 20th Here's the, the link right here. Oh, this is. <laughs> and so these are all the ones that have had the most views. Actually, that one probably didn't have the most views. <laughs> all right. So yeah, sort for TikTok, and I also put a link to that app in um, how to download it. I put that in that helpful links document that's in the Google Drive. Okay. So I've also put um, a blank copy of, of the template in the Google Drive so you guys can use this, um, you know, customize it as you need, but hopefully that will be helpful to you as well. All right, Trend Talk. I wanted to talk about this. This is the, um, the app that I use. Um, it is not free, unfortunately. It's $19 a year, but in my mind, that $19 is money very well spent, and I'll show you why here in a second. Um, you'll wanna be sure to watch what other creators have done as well, uh, not just in your niche, but outside of your niche. See how they've used these sounds, and then save to your favorites folder later, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, I just got a, a notification. You can set it up so it can give you notifications when something's starting to trend. You can have, you can watch it trend globally, or you can watch it trend in the United States. And I think there's one for Canada. I think there's one for Australia. So those of you who are watching from other countries, there are ways of doing that. So I'm gonna see if I can do this. Um, make sure it's working. And I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll find out here in a second. Okay, it really shuts off everything. But it should be working. Okay, so basically, Trend Talk. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this for a second. I just want to make sure because I have not used this before. This this is brand new. Um, Monterey just uh, made it so okay. Yeah, you guys can see it. Awesome, sweet. All right, let's keep going. I just wanted to make sure that you could see it because Monterey just made this available and the and the uh, Apple just made this available in the last OS of the iPhone and. Um, you know, this is 
This is brand spanking new. I just started doing this this morning. I just uh, upgraded to Monterey. So uh, I just wanted to make sure it was going to work. Um, the bad news about this is, and I didn't mention this in this uh, presentation, but the bad news is, is that it's only available on the iPhone. So uh, th that's, a, that's a big downside. I'm hoping that they're going to be making, I hope that they'll may be making a, um, you know, an Android version, but so far they have not. Let me show you this. Okay, so this is Trend Talk. Um, I just got a, a notification that there was something trending right now. So if I go here to this button up here, uh, this is the one that's trending. It's nine seconds, so it's definitely under 15 seconds. A, a lot of these sounds are going to be just nine seconds. So let's see if I can get this to play. So some of these are really terrible, but some of these are pretty good. And I've gotten a lot of ideas from here. Um, you want to look for stuff that's under under 15 seconds. Here's one that's nine seconds. Where? Why are you being weird to me? You said you wanted to get married. When I say that, when you had the lake up, 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 up. And then the thing you can do is that you can take this and you can go and see what other people have done. So I get ideas from this and I, you know, then you can take this and say, okay, uh, here's what somebody else has done. I can take this and adapt it for my niche. Now, if you want to use this, you can add it to favorites here, right here, or you can go ahead and use it. So if you want to go ahead and use it, say use this sound and then that will, that will take you right into TikTok. So it interfaces with TikTok very nicely. I'm going to get out of here, go back to Trend Talk. Okay, so then the other thing is, is that um, what I do a lot is I'll look at uh, predicted to rise. Now here's where you find those viral sounds before they go viral. Um, so this is their AI predicts that this is going to continue to rise in the United States. Um, you want to uh, check these things out. Um, Let's see if I can find one here. A lot of, a lot of times these original sounds are very cool, like this one here. Let's see, let's see what this one is. That's 33 seconds. We don't want that. This one is eight seconds. I don't know what this is, but we'll find out. Okay, so it's just sound. Um, yeah, I mean, think of how you can incorporate this into your content and um, I can guarantee you, you're going to have, you'll have fun with it and then other people will as well because it's going to be something that, that they're seeing too. Um, you've got top sounds in the UK, top sounds in France, predicted to rise in Australia, um, new trends USA. I mean, it's just so so cool and then personalized for you uh you can get sounds that are that are you know that that uh, trend talk is picking just for you so you can put stuff into your profile this is these are the sounds that i'm looking for and um it will give them to you the other thing you can do too is to get push notifications um so that's going to be also helpful like i just got the notification just a few minutes ago that there was a new sound trending um, and here's you, here's how you can customize this. Help us learn about your goals. I'm just starting out. I'm starting my, to build my presence, looking to grow, um, optimize and scale my content. So, you know, if you have a significant uh, um, social media presence already, um, you know, or if you're looking to grow, that is something that is going to customize all of these um, these notifications and these suggestions for you. So that's Trend Talk. Uh, I hope it's helpful. Hope it's helpful for you guys and that you can um, then take that and run with it. Okay. Um, 
Any questions about that? Hey, I've got some some folks here. Hey, everybody. Deb is here. Cher is here. Barb is here. Awesome. Glad you guys are here. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, so the basic, basic structure, and you guys know all this already, but you know, it, you're basically looking at the hook, the story, the offer. Those are the three parts of, of all content. And oh, this is so touchy. <laughs> let's move back up. Um, so let's talk about the hook first. That's what's that's what's going to get people's attention. And on TikTok, you have less than five seconds, actually probably less to get someone's attention. So you want to make sure that you're grabbing their attention so that they stick around to hear your story. Um, so I've got a couple of tools here that um, that I've selected. Now, Kick-Ass Headline Generator, this is, it's, this is such an easy one to use. See if I can go here and pull this up. And I think I actually, no, that's not it. And that's not it. So I'm going to have to pull it up here again. Let me get this. All right, I'm going to pull this down into the window so you all can see it. Okay, so this is super easy to use. Um, it's fun to get started. Make sure you guys can see this. Um, so let's say you're, uh, what you're trying to do is going to be... Um, uh, you want to do a numbered list, let's say. And so this opens up this um, this table. So your topic, let's say it's, well, I have make money online, but let's say it's keto, right? So if we change it to keto, a uh, desired outcome is lose weight, maybe. Uh, undesirable outcome is going to be... Um, uh, not losing weight, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then points and content, let's say 10. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and generate this. Hit return. And then you're going to have list headline, 10 ways to lose weight. Side note headline, 10 ways to lose weight. Number two is our favorite. Uh, and then so on. Uh, you know, proven methods, mistakes. So this is really helpful. I really like this little app a lot. Of course, it's free. Um, you can also do this as a how-to, uh, explanatory. You know, how saving one dollar a day can help, can stop you from not losing weight. I don't know how that would be, but <laughs> um, you guys get the idea. So all of these, all of these different categories up here. Like if you're if and if your um, niche is make money online, and you're trying to target uh, folks trying to leave their nine to five job, so desired outcome is to um, you know leave their nine to five, and then precious things might be um, freedom. And then undesirable outcome might be uh, not leaving their nine to five, right? So continuing to trade time for money. And then their audience is going to be, uh, depending on your demographic and your age category, let's say it's people in their 40s. They're burned out, they're done, they want to get out. And then something that could affect outcome. Um, I know for me, not leaving my nine to five is the fact that um, I have health insurance through my nine to five. So let's put that in and see what we get. I don't know if I could type. 
That might be helpful. All right, let's see what they gave me here. Um, warning, are you sabotaging your freedom? Uh, why are you not leaving your nine to five? Why you won't be able to leave your nine to five in 2021? So on. So these, these are great. I mean, guys, this is such a fun thing to use. Now, here's another one. Um, I think I put this in here. Oh, yeah. So one of the things that you might want to try doing is to split test your headlines. Um, I know Barb and I were just talking about this yesterday. Uh, you know, think about, you know, making some content with a couple of different variations on, uh, on the headline. Like if you think that this headline is going to work really well, try that one. If you think another one is going to work really well, but they're both in the same topic, um, you know, give that a try and maybe do a short form and a long form video and see how that, how that works for you. Um, so another tool that you can use is something called pick F U. And I don't know if that means what I think it does, or if it's, um, you know, if that's pick foo, but I'm going to bring this down so you guys can see it right now. Now I have not um, I have not tried this out. I know there is a free version of this. Um, there's also a pay for version. So, um, but this will help you to be able to split test your content. And like I said, I haven't really um, investigated this very much. I just found it this morning on my on my research. Uh, but basically what this will do is it will not just not just give you analytics, but it'll do it very, very quickly because it has a target audience that it can send out to um, and will target the right group of people so that you can find out uh, what headline is working um, so that you don't have to kind of, you know, do it yourself and collect data through, um, through TikTok. I haven't tried it. I'll let you know if I think it's worthwhile, but um, it, it does look promising. And like I said, it does have a free version. Um, I don't think it's that expensive. Oh, wow, sure, it is expensive. <laughs> $79 a month, That that's pretty pricey. So I would stick, stick with the free version. Um, you know, it says it's always free plan for users looking for feedback. Um, but then down here it says $1 per response. So I don't know what that means. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. I'll take a look at this. So there's more information here. So if you're doing a poll, um, $1 response, minimum 50 response, it says it's going to cost you 50 bucks. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's not worth it, but, um, I just thought it was interesting. You can do your own split testing. All right, so that is creating your hook. Um, then the story. So that's basically your content, you know, the, the heart of your content. And you've got to give people a compelling reason to stick around or they are never going to hear your offer. Um, and the story is going to be whatever that topic idea is, right? Your headline is going to be, um, you know, taking that topic idea, kind of putting it into that um, headline generator or coming up with your own, of course. And then the story is going to be what your topic is. But you have to give them a compelling reason to stick around. And that's where those four E's are going to come in. You know, the emotion, engage, uh, educate, and entertain. You want to make sure that whatever that, whatever that content is that people are going to not just, you're not just going to get their attention with the hook, but you're going to get them to stick around and you're going to get them to stick around for the offer. So that's your call to action. Uh, the value, your story is not your offer. However, I, I see an awful lot of people on TikTok, um, you know, talking about um, all the benefits and I've done it too guys. I've done it too talking about all the benefits of the 15-day business builder challenge 
or you know the three-day biz, uh, business breakthrough or freedom breakthrough you know all this all the wonderful things that you've that you've learned through it I've done it myself but that shouldn't be your offer and the thing about this is that you shouldn't always have a call to action either and I I'm guilty of that just just like we all are we want people to, to know oh yeah I've got this great thing linked in my bio and now TikTok doesn't want us to say that now because we're we're being chastised I guess <laughs> for, for using a call to action but um, the idea is that you should create mystery uh, and get you know create mystery and curiosity to get your target audience to click on um, the link in your bio without telling them to do that uh, by this time they should know unless they're brand new newbies on TikTok they should know where they need to go to do that but um, you know, you can have a call to action. Just don't do it all the time. Do it, you know, maybe a fifth of the time. Uh, you'll notice in the content pillars, promotion is only one of the five that I have in there. So I don't promote in every one of my videos. Uh, a lot of times I will do something else. I'll tell another story. Um, so think about rotating that. And so you're not always uh, promoting. You don't always have a con uh, call to action and that you're providing value. I mean, that's going to be the most important thing. All right, moving on. All right, next, copywriting. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but this is the most important part of of your content and what people overlook almost all the time. So if you aren't really very skilled in copywriting or feel like you're not skilled in copywriting, take a course. There is lots of courses out there on copywriting. Um, I have not done a lot of research on which one is the best one. That's probably something that I need to do, but I would recommend if you really feel like you need help with that, uh, take a course on copywriting and get good at it because that is going to make the difference between good content and mediocre content and if you're wondering why you know like sometimes um, you know you'll see a video where people are just droning on and on and on about something um, you you know d do not do that you want to um, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing is going to have um, you know keep someone's interest now think about your email marketing right so your email marketing that's based on copywriting and if you're using somebody else's email swipes read the read through those see how they're um, you know how they're structured how they're patterned what's the verbiage uh, what kind of keywords are there uh, sumo is um, is they're the ones who did that kick-ass headline generator and they have a list of power words. I've got it right up here on my wall. Um, I'll put that into that helpful links um, uh, page that's in uh, the Google Drive. And use some of those words. You know, download that list, print it out, put it on your wall. Use those words in your content. Um, and then the other thing you can do too is to buy a book, uh, Copywriting Secrets by Jim Edwards. That seems to be the one that everybody likes a lot. Um, I do not have a copy of it right now. I actually have um, something that's on my, my Kindle that I've read. Um, you know, find one that works for you. But I highly recommend that you do seek out um, some copywriting skills or develop some copywriting skills, I should say. All right. Video editing. So here, here's where we get down to it. So... I'm going to talk first about video editing skills in the app. Um, the video editing apps and software, that's a whole other story, and there's a lot of them, uh, a lot of different kinds. Canva, DaVinci, and Filmora, I know, I think InShot too. All four of these are actually apps that you can use on your smartphone. But um, Premiere Pro is a desktop I believe a desktop only. I don't think they have a smartphone version of Premiere Pro. I can't imagine why they would because it's it's just such a complex program. Um, but if you are skilled with video editing, uh, definitely um, 
you could give that a shot. It is going to give you a lot more features than uh, some of the other ones will. But everybody seems to like DaVinci Resolve. Um, I have not tried it myself. I use, I've used Canva. Uh, but all of these you can set up just for TikTok. And there's a lot of information out on YouTube about how to do just that. Uh, so I encourage you to, to explore that. We might, I might do something a little bit more advanced um, on this at another date. But um, for today, we're just going to be talking about video editing skills in the TikTok app. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. Um, oh, and by the way, guys, uh, this here, um, this is my stylus. This is what I use to, um, you know, to manage my clips. So all this is is just a pen that has a rubber tip on it. And I've put a link to uh, a pack of four or five in the helpful links uh, um, document that's in the Google Drive. Fairly cheap, I think $6.99 for four of these. Um, I always lose them, so I buy them. I buy them by the bulk, but um, super helpful. So much easier to use than um, your finger, <laughs> because I, I, I just can't. I just can't use my finger. It just doesn't work. All right, I am going to go into the app. I'm going to mirror. Oops, I always miss it. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go into TikTok. All right, so if I'm creating a new TikTok, of course you guys know you're going to click the, the plus sign, add sound. So I'm going to go to my favorites folder. And let's see, let me find one that's, that's good. This what is the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to do it again. Okay, so I just actually created this video and I'm going to go ahead and what open is this up. the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? Okay, um, so if I were to do this from scratch, probably what I would do is I would do, you know, first of all, I would do the first take um, looking you know, off the camera so that it kind of looks like I'm talking to somebody. So I would do the first take on that. And then I would, um, you know, set it so that it's just the timer. What is the biggest so I would drag this slider here. Here, let me, let me do this again so you guys can see what I just did. Um, and I just lost it. Don't do what I do. <laughs> Here we go. What is the biggest takeaway from So you go up to timer and then the you're gonna wanna drag timer. your timer so that you're just you're stopping it at this point right here. Right? What is the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? Okay, what so is then the biggest takeaway from this entire experience. So then count down and so then I would shoot my video. Take takeaway from this entire experience. Okay, so now I've lip synced to that. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to save that. Let's see. And then I'm going to go to the next section, which is going to be. The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to. The biggest takeaway from this experience. The biggest takeaway from this experience. Okay, so then I'm going to turn the camera again so that I'm now looking off to this side so it looks like I'm talking to the person who's interviewing me. So now I'm going to start that. The biggest, biggest takeaway from this experience? experience? Okay, let's see how that worked. The biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience? What's the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience? And then you're going to go back and you're going to hit the timer again. And, and, I'm do it again. and then I'm going to go ahead and start the countdown. Is then I'm going to do it again. What's the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to do it again. What's the biggest takeaway from this entire experience? The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to do it again. Okay. The biggest takeaway from 
All right, so I'm not going to save that because I've already, I've already done that, but I've got it in my drafts folder right now, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to pull that out. The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to do it again. Okay, so now. So now I might want to adjust my clips. Unfortunately, this keeps on playing. But I can take this and trim it now, and I can get in pretty tight. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one. The biggest takeaway from this experience. The biggest takeaway from this experience. The biggest takeaway. The biggest takeaway from this experience. The biggest takeaway from this experience. It's harder to do when you're doing uh, lip sync like this. If you're doing your own videos um, where you're writing your own script, um, it's a lot easier to do and you can get in really tight in these clips. And then, of course, you know. Now, if you don't like one of these clips, you can always click start over and then you can reshoot it. That's one way of doing it. If you don't like it at all, you can delete it. And I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead. The biggest takeaway from this experience is that I'm going to do it again. Make sure I've got these clips. The biggest takeaway from this And I'm going to do it again. Okay, so now, um, here's another one. Okay. I just filmed this the other day. Okay. Turn this down, this is really loud. So now, if I'm going to do a text overlay, I can start with my text. Now, a lot of you have asked me, how do I get, um, you know, different types of text? Well, it's right here, guys. It's, you know, you can choose any one of these. Um, each one has a little bit of a different style to it. Also, um, here's your orientation. And you can also, of course, do text to speech. A lot of people do that. That's very popular. Um, you've got all these different colors here play around with that. You can do a lot with that. I like to use serif font a lot. I also like the typewriter. So let's say if this first one would be, um, oh, I don't know. Um, let's say if it was uh, one to one uh, coaching. And honestly, guys, I don't know what I'm doing here right now. I, I don't know what I'm, I didn't know what I was going to say. So let's say the first thing that I'm going to do is, um, what are you going to offer in your coaching pro program? Now, I would never use this as a headline. That's really super boring. But, um, you know, and then you just toggle through these, you know, and can get all kinds of different effects. You can also do handwriting, which is kind of fun. You can blow it up. And then, of course, you're going to want to set your duration. And this is something that's really critical, too. You guys all know how to do this. But one of the things that I think is super important is to be able to time it. So if, you've, if you're trying to time it, notice where the, the seconds are. So if I'm trying to time it so that everything is, is starting and ending at the same time, so if I've got a lot of text on the screen, I'm going to take note of this and I'm going to write it down. I'm going to put down 
like this one starts at 1.2 seconds and ends at 4.5. So everything I'm putting in that particular clip or that sequence is going to start and stop at the same time. So you want to keep track of those um, intro or in mark in. It's called a mark in and mark out, mark out point for your text. And you want to make sure that you're consistent throughout that entire clip. So um, stickers, you guys all already know how to use stickers, but if you want to use an arrow or something like that, you know, that's in the, um, the stickers folder. You know, you can put in different stickers and you can also set the duration. So super simple stuff. Um, but that's basically how you're going to do text overlays, how you're going to do your clip management. Now, one thing you can do too, let's say you go into, um, oh, by the way, if you, um, if you do anything like text overlays or stickers or anything like that, and you go back to adjust your clips, you're going to have to discard everything, which is kind of a, a pain. But so I've got all of these clips here. Let's say I want this clip here to be in a different place. So I can just press on that with my stylus, pick it up, bring it over, and drop it. So now it's going to be in a different place. All right. So I'm going to quit editing because I don't want it like that right now. Okay. I'm going to get out of here. I think I covered everything. Oh, color grading. I didn't cover, I didn't cover that. Shoot. Um, you guys have probably already seen this anyway, but I'm just going to show you. Oops, this is the one I want. Okay. You've probably already seen this, but I'm just going to show you. So if I do have a, a clip, let's go back to that one. Now you almost have to do it when you first start out, but you can color grade. So you can see, you know, I can do that. I can do warmth, island. All of these are called, this is called color grading and it's built into the app. Um, some of these are better for food, landscape, holiday, very contrasty. Uh, this one is going to be, uh, let's see, there's one in here that I really like a lot. Like this, the tonal, uh, fade, and then black and white. It's called fossil. So there's your color grading. Hope that helps. Get out of there. Okay. So I hope that's helpful. Um, now, let's talk about, uh, we're almost out of time here. Uh, let's talk about your, uh, your equipment. Now, camera, obviously, uh, that's going to be your smartphone. Um, I have used a more expensive video vlogging camera and I hardly ever use it anymore. I will be using it for YouTube, um, for doing my YouTube videos, but honestly, guys, for, for TikTok, uh, your smartphone is just fine. Now, for lighting, um, I use, and I've got it right here, um, I use a ring light. Here it is. Um, I don't really like this ring light, and my boyfriend the other night said that he thought it made me look too washed out, and he didn't like the fact that it was reflecting off of my glasses. So I'm actually going to buy something called a softbox. I don't have that yet, but that's the next thing that I'm going to be purchasing. Um, they're not that expensive. It's basically a light that has a diffuser on it, and um, it will it will help with my lighting, but also um, you know not reflect off of my glasses. Do you need lighting? Not really. If you have good lighting already, natural light is going to be the best. Actually, um, if you do have natural light, I just, my house is kind of dark, um, especially on days like today where there's not a lot of sunlight. 
Um, but if you have natural lighting, that's actually probably better than anything else. Uh, if you want to do a little fill lighting, that also is, is nice to have because then that takes away all the shadows from your face. Um, but you want to have good, clear video. I, I, I do see a lot of people with very grainy video, and it just doesn't look that good. So I would try to stand out from the crowd and try to make your lighting and your video as clean as you possibly can get it. Um, it's just gonna it's just gonna help with with your viewership and your in your content. Um, as far as stands go, my ring light has a stand here that will hold a um, it'll hold a smartphone. And I am going to be investing something else. But here, guys, this is this is the thing I use most. Of all, this is um, a DJI OM4. Uh, it's it's just so helpful. It's called a gimbal, and you can attach a smartphone to it. I'll show you here. So my smartphone just connects right here to it. Okay, just like this. I don't know if you can see that, right? And then that just snaps right on the top of that. And then I can, um, it'll rotate around. I don't know if you guys saw that, it's pretty cool, the way it rotates around. This is called a gimbal because if I want to walk with it, um, it's going to stabilize so that there's no movement whatsoever. And it also um, will turn sideways. I can position it in different ways. And it's also very portable. I just love this thing. Um, this particular one's about $129, uh, but it's so worth it. It'll, you know, I can put it on the countertop. Um, I use it all the time. I use it pretty much for every video that I shoot. The nice thing is it's rechargeable as well. And when I'm done with it, I can just turn it off. And then if I want to take it with me, I can disengage that, fold it up, and stick it at the bottom of my, my camera bag or my, my uh, um, backpack or whatever I'm using. So very helpful, very useful. Uh, highly recommend that. Now there are other ones on the market, um, probably cheaper. DJI has been doing camera equipment and, and uh, vlogging equipment for a really long time. They have a lot of different um, uh, gimbals and stabilizers, um, but this one is, I think, pretty reasonable compared to some of the other things that they sell. And um, it's really quality. I mean, you hold it in your hand and you know that it's, it's just a really quality piece of equipment and that it would last you a really super long time. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Um, I put links to all of those in the helpful, helpful links document that's in the Google Drive. And that's basically my presentation for today. Um, here is, uh, you know, how to get a hold of me, email me. Um, and then there's all of my, uh, my profile URLs. So if you want to message me or follow me on any of, the, any of the other apps, you can do that as well. So that is, that is it. So if folks have questions, I'd be happy to answer them.